How you doing? I'm Chris from Premier Guitar. We're in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, Summer Nam 2009. I'm with Everett Wood of RS Custom Guitars here in Nashville. You, if you look at the guitars, you can see there's a, a very obvious influence here, but the story is actually a little bit more involved in this, so I'm going to ask Everett to fill us in for, the, for those that don't know the details of the, the lost guitar, Brian May's lost guitar. Well, the whole story goes back to uh, the early 80s. Brian was in uh, Chicago, Illinois, playing with his band, and uh, he had an accident with his original guitar, and they gave him his backup guitar, which was built by John Birch. And uh, so he had a, a string break with that halfway through his solo, and he kind of got a little upset, and he threw it off stage that night. And it broke the neck off, broke the headstock, and really just destroyed the whole guitar. So uh, later on, a few months later, he runs into John Page in the studio, who was working for John Deacon at the time, and uh, he started talking about guitars. He said, you know, my father and I did this and so on, and he said there had been so many people that had tried to, you know, get it spot on, doing it exactly the way we did. And John Page said, you know what, I can build you another guitar and it will be exactly like the one that you and your father made. So Brian gave John Page his original guitar, uh, the broken guitar, and a nice set of plans, and John Page set out building him another guitar. He got about 25% done, and a few things happened in his life, uh, and Fender started laying people off, so he just put everything in storage and goes out on the road. Well, that comes up to 2004. I had bought a magazine and from the early 80s and was reading this interview, and Brian May just described everything, you know, point for point. I did this, I did this, the guitar was here. I made a few calls, ended up talking to John Page a couple days later. John Page emails me and he says, hey, guess what? I found in my basement. I found the broken guitar that's been missing for 24 years. So, you know, we contacted Mr. May and, hey, we found your guitar, we would like to return it to you and so on. And uh, so we returned it, he was happy, he actually had the guitar repaired is what I was told. And uh, so a whole year goes by and John Page and I had kept in contact and he calls me up one day and he says, hey, I'm cleaning out, you know, some other storerooms and I found the guitar that we started building for Dr. May. And uh, seeing that you really have a kind of a passion for this and, you know, I just, I'm not into it anymore. Uh, if you'll finish the project, I'll send it to you. So he sends me all the information. And this is the original guitar that... This is John Page's guitar, the one he built for Brian May. What we got was actually uh, a neck, a rough neck with a fretboard. Uh, he sent a lot of patterns and drawings. And he had taken the original guitar to Fender taken it completely apart, measured it, photographed it, traced it, and so on, and he sent us all this information. And this is what we came up with. And it really is kind of a close second. There's a few changes. Yeah, on it here. looks like there's a, a couple of things, a neck angle and some, some, some slight differences. Now, I understand you, you've been involved in Red Special replicas for quite a while, so you're really an expert on yes, how this I, guitar works, and you know kind of all of the gory details. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those fanatics. There's so many of us out there. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that really just kind of bothered me about the whole industry was, just like Dr. May had said for so many years, nobody ever really captured it. And there has been a few people that, that have tried, and there is, you know, actually somebody over in the U.K. that's building them under Brian May's uh, name. And uh, long story short, uh, we just went back and copied as many details as we could. I mean, we actually use inner valve springs out of a motorcycle. Uh, you got knitting needles for the tremolo. I use a knitting needle and I hand form the, uh, the tremolo tip. And uh, we have a gentleman up in Chicago that, that makes all of our hardware. The only thing that we buy when we manufacture this guitar is the tuners, the fret wire, the uh, switches and the potentiometers. So the pickups on this are the replicas of the Burns Trisonics that are in the actual Red Special. Yes, we took the technical information that we got from John Page and we sent it to a gentleman named Addison Turner and he's in the UK and he has a small business 
replicating the original old style Burns Trisonics. And I understand that he has a uh, licensing deal with them to use the actual Burns name now. He does special runs for certain people. Uh, we don't have the Burns name put on usually. We really like his stuff and he does so an absolute fantastic job, replicates everything down to the smallest detail. You really got it dialed right in. I mean, just like the original, the finger, the fretboard is oak. Yes, it's oak, it's it, white oak. These are not actually coated in Rustins, but they are dyed black, yes. just like the original. Yes, we, uh, we use a, a modern polyester finish now rather than Rustins because there's just so much to do with the Rustins. It's a two-step process, and, you know, it just doesn't work that well for us. Gets a little tricky. Body construction is the same as the original. Yes. Now, we don't, uh, we make our own block board because the block board that we have bought here in the United States is, comes out of Mexico, and I, I'm sure, you know, that's good for a lot of things, but it doesn't meet our standards. So what I did is I asked John Page, what did you do? And he told us how he made his own block board. And basically what he did was take strips of pine and, um, uh, alternated the grain and we make a piece of blackboard out of it and that's what we make our bodies out of <laughs> very cool so now as i understand it you can off you offer a uh, one that's actually much closer to the original spec of the red special as well as the model which is john page's copy how, how far apart are they really in detail because i know a lot of the guys that are you know really into the red special are just you know they're zeroed right in on every little detail Yes, uh, it goes back to, you know, guitar players being fanatics and fans and so on. John Page, obviously a Fender man. There were some Fender influences on this. Uh, the neck angle is a little bit different. The, uh, this neck is actually a little bit wider. Uh, we tried to replicate exactly what was done according to uh, the plans and the measurements that we had received. So, you know, we try to keep it as close as possible to what we know to be original. You guys are really trying to dial it in, like zero tolerance for departure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even the neck on this thing. I mean, for people that aren't used to and don't know that much about it, just this massive piece of wood. It is, is a huge neck. And, you know, being here in Nashville, there's so many Telly and Strat players, and they come into the shop and so on, and they, they put their hands around that neck, and first thing, that you know, their eyes get real big. I can't play this. 20 minutes later, they're going, you know what, I'm liking this. I'm loving it. I like the way it feels. It fills my palm in my hand. It, uh, it, the registry, getting up to the higher, the frets and so on, it's very easy to play. And we actually offer it uh, set up with eights in very low action, low frets. And, uh, you know, the short scale, 24-inch scale, and light strings, low action, it's very, very slinky. It's like playing spaghetti, you know. <laughs> So in addition to doing, you know, spot-on replicas, you build a custom guitar for, for people that want something with different color, different wood, whatever kind oh, yeah, of specs. We, it. we offer, uh, you know, beautiful maple tops and, uh, you know, different specifications. We're doing one for a gentleman in Chicago right now. It's his, actually his third guitar with us, and he wanted a scallop neck and uh, different switching, different body woods, and his body's actually thicker. And this one right here is uh, for a gentleman in the UK who's uh, very special to us. He had bought at a guitar office last year and he's a huge fan and a very big collector. So he called up and said, hey, I would really like to have one of these specked out and made exactly, you know, as close to the original John Birch guitar as you can do. We did take a couple liberties and I explained that to him ahead of time because there was some tuning problems and so on with the original. And it looks like we've overcome all that because the guitar stays in tune, plays very well, and it, it has a different sound because it is all maple. So, <laughs> Super heavy, cool. Heavy, heavy, Super heavy. cool and heavy. <laughs> People that are interested in uh, finding out more about what you guys do, they can find you on the web where? www.rscustomguitars.com. Sounds good, Everett. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. I'm Chris Burgess. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.